In this video, you're going to learn about a medication used to treat conditions such as high blood pressure called lisinopril. And this is also known by its brand names, Prinavil and Zestril. In this video, we're going to cover what lisinopril is as well as how it works, who can and cannot take lisinopril, practicalities of how and when to take it, what to do if you accidentally miss a dose, potential side effects, advice if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, and finally, possible interactions of lisinopril with other medications that you may have been prescribed or you take over the counter. As ever, each section is timestamped, so please feel free to skip ahead if there's a particular section of this video that you're interested in. So lisinopril is a medication that's used to treat high blood pressure. This is known medically as hypertension, and it's also used to treat other conditions such as heart failure. It's also often prescribed after a heart attack, and it can help prevent future strokes and heart attacks and can improve survival after a heart attack. It can also be used for diabetic kidney disease and to slow down the disease progression. So now in terms of how it works, well, it belongs to a class of medications called ACE inhibitors. Now, without getting too technical, it works by widening your blood vessels and making it easier for your heart to pump blood around the body. So now we understand how it works, well who can and cannot take lisinopril? So most adults and children aged 6 years and over can take lisinopril, however it may not be suitable for certain individuals, especially those who are already pregnant or breastfeeding, those people who are having dialysis for kidney disease or any other type of blood filtration, people who have severe heart, liver or kidney problems, people who have unstable or low blood pressure or who are going for a major operation where they will have a general anaesthetic to put them to sleep, if you've had recent diarrhea or vomiting, if you're on a low salt diet, it may also not be suitable if you're diabetic because lisinopril can cause your blood sugar, especially in the first few weeks of taking it, to fall or be erratic. So it's important to remain vigilant for possible hypo episodes. So how and when do you take lisinopril? Well, lisinopril normally comes as tablets, but if you struggle to take the tablets, then it can also come as liquid form. The exact doses of lisinopril will depend on why you take the medicine, but for high blood pressure, a typical dose might be 20 milligrams once a day. The maximum dose is 80 milligrams once a day, or after a recent heart attack, it might be 10 milligrams once a day. And for children, the doses are typically lower and based on body weight. Your doctor will also take into account your current blood pressure as well as any potential side effects when dosing your medicine. Now you'll typically be started on a lower dose and this can then be gradually increased over a number of weeks if you're tolerating the medicine okay. A child will usually again start on a lower dose of lisinopril and again this dose may gradually increase depending on the child's blood pressure and other symptoms. In practical terms, you usually take lisinopril once a day and it might be taken before bed because it can make you dizzy when you stand up. Whatever time of day you take it, try to make it the same time each day. Lisinopril can also be taken with or without food and it should be swallowed whole with a glass of water. If you're taking lisinopril as a liquid, it will come with a plastic syringe or spoon to help you measure out the right dose. If you don't have one of these, please ask your pharmacist for one and don't try to use a kitchen teaspoon as it won't measure the right amount of medicine. After a heart attack, you usually take lisinopril for around six weeks. Your doctor will then decide if you need to keep taking it for longer. And for high blood pressure, heart failure or diabetic kidney disease, treatment can be lifelong. If you become ill whilst on lisinopril, and by this I mean you develop something like a viral illness causing high temperature vomiting or diarrhea, you should speak to your doctor because they may alter the dose or temporarily stop it until you become well again. Similarly, if you accidentally take too much, speak to your doctor. So let's talk about side effects because certain people who take lisinopril can develop side effects. And around one in 10 people develop these common side effects. One of the most common ones is a dry tickly cough that doesn't get better or go away. They can also feel lightheaded or dizzy, especially when standing up, develop headaches, feeling sick or vomiting and sometimes itching. Now serious side effects on the other hand are rare and they happen in less than one in a thousand people but if you do develop these, you should call a doctor. And these would include things like the whites of your eyes turning yellow, or the skin turning yellow, although this may be less obvious on people with darker skin types. If you're paler than usual, you feel tired, faint, or dizzy. If you've got any signs of bleeding, for example, bleeding from the gums, or that you're bruising more easily than normal, a sore throat, 
a fever, or if you get infections more easily, because these can be signs of blood or bone marrow disorders. You should also let your doctor know if you've got severe stomach pain. This could be the sign of an inflamed pancreas because of acute pancreatitis, or if you've got swollen ankles or blood in your pee, or if you're not peeing at all. These could be potential signs of kidney problems. Now it's important to seek immediate medical attention if you develop weakness on one side of the body, trouble speaking, thinking, loss of balance, or blurred eyesight, because these could be signs of a stroke. Also, if you get chest pain, this could be a sign of a heart problem, and if the chest pain is not getting better, then you must go to hospital straight away. In rare cases, lisinopril can also cause a serious allergic reaction known as anaphylaxis. This can be life-threatening, and you should call an ambulance immediately if you develop swelling of the face, tongues, or lips. Finally, in terms of side effects, taking lisinopril for a long time can sometimes cause your kidneys not to work as well as they should. Your doctor will check with you how well your kidneys are working with regular blood tests. Now, these are not all of the side effects of this medicine, and for a full list, please see the information leaflet on the inside of the medicine pack. So now let's talk about lisinopril in pregnancy. Well, lisinopril is not recommended in pregnancy because it can affect your baby's kidneys, particularly if it's taken in the second and third trimesters, and it can risk damage to the baby's kidneys and lungs. If you're taking lisinopril and planning to get pregnant, or if you are pregnant, speak to your doctor. Usually, they'll be able to prescribe you a different medicine that's safe to take in pregnancy. And lisinopril should be stopped by the time you're 12 weeks pregnant at the latest. It may be safe to take if you're breastfeeding, but again, you should speak to your doctor first if you're going to do this. Finally, how might lisinopril interact with other medicines? Well, there are some medicines that can affect the way lisinopril works, such as ibuprofen, high doses of aspirin, medicines that make you pee more called diuretics, such as furosemide, steroid medicines like prednisolone, and allopurinol that you take for gout. Now, these are just to name a few medications, and also, if you're also taking over-the-counter medicines or herbal medicines that your doctor may not be aware of, you should let them know before starting lisinopril. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please remember to like it, leave a comment, and if you've got any thoughts you'd like to share about your own experiences with lisinopril, please leave them in the comments section, and please consider subscribing to the channel for weekly medical education videos if you've not done so already. References, extra resources and the disclaimer are in the description box of the video and as ever, thank you for watching and until next time, bye.